Good evening. How y'all doing today? This is Minister Peyton Moore coming at you today, and I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. It's beautiful outside. The weather is nice. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your children. Most of all, thank God for this beautiful day, because he's the one that woke us up this morning. Today, we're going to be talking about hair, the subject of hair, a God's gift, hair, a woman's glory, hair. And it's been a topic that's been going on for a minute about, you know, our young men and women and our brothers and sisters wearing dreads and braids. And I'm trying to figure out why so many companies and people are discriminating against people wearing dreads and braids. Now, if my young brother or sister have this natural look, and as long as they are keeping it clean, conditioned, trimmed, edged up, and, and everything, and and, and they know that certain job uh, requirements that they have to wear it up or pent up or with a hairnet, especially if you're in the food industry, you have to have on a hat, hairnet, keep it pent up. I believe they'll go for that. And then there are industries where, you know, people want to wear their natural hair. Now, what I have a problem with is when we have other cultures that have hair, long, stringy, ponytails hanging down their back, sometime past their back. There's no problem. In the 60s and 70s, there was no problem with froze and braids and, and, and things like that. There was no problem. Dreads, there was no problem. Even Bo Derek had micro braids. And everybody applauded that, no matter who you are. Oh, wow, this Caucasian white woman coming out the water with these braids. Oh, wow, that, that's hot. But if we go back in history, our African ancestry history, that's what it was. It was the kinky braids and dreads. In America, you know, you had people that had the nice, fresh haircut, the pressed hair, or, you know, especially with the women, you had the mom, that, or the grandmother that had that Dixie Peach, or you had that uh, uh, raw crown, or uh, the uh, uh, other hair uh, pressing, conditioning greases that they put on your hair, and they put that iron... Uh, put that uh, stove on and they put that 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 iron uh, comb on that uh, deal and press your hair out and they put that thing that looked like scissors, the pressing uh, deal, they open up like scissors and press your hair and you hear it frying and the black men usually wore their hair low cut or they had processes called the conk and they pressed it out and had it fried and laid to the side with that all that lie <laughs> But if you remember in the movie Malcolm X, when Malcolm X, they was putting that processed conk on his head, and the police was turning the water off, and they had to go get the water out the toilet in order to stop it from burning. And then, you know, there's a time when, you know, back coming up into the late 60s, 70s, you know, brothers was wearing their afros, and they were wearing their plaits, and they was wearing their braids, and also the sisters was wearing their fros and plaits and braids. And as time went on, we seen where... People started wearing more pressed hair and jerry curls and S curls and TBC and this relaxer and that relaxer. And then what ended up happening, these chemicals that they was putting in all of these hair products coming from China and Korea ended up taking the edges of your hair off or causing you to go bald. And then we had to find a good beautician that could say, hey, I need my hair to grow back. What can I do? Well, they tried their best. Some of them really cared for your hair. Some of them was just gouging for your money, getting your money. Your hair is a gift from God. And be careful. Sometimes when you're getting these micro braids and plaques in your hair, if you don't have a good uh, beautician that, or barber that really care about you that does this kind of work, uh, sometimes they're taking a lot of your hair out. But if they care about you, they're going to try everything they can not to take it out, and they're going to tell you enough is enough. Your hair is good. The conditioning is good. It's healthy. Let's not put no more extensions in there because I know you want to wear your braids. Let's do it naturally, and I applaud that to beauticians that do that. But we're going to be talking about this hair thing today, and we're going to be talking about Noah, but we're going to go back in a little history and bring it up to today. Now, as I say, anything that affects us and our community, uh, especially from the outside when people are discriminated against our young brothers and sisters and our black brothers and sisters, even as adults. And the, it, as a black pastor, it affects me. That means we need to talk about it to see what's really going on. 
Because, I mean, as I say, you know, people go, from other cultures can, can wear their hair any kind of way, different colors and different styles. When it comes down to the black culture wearing there, that's a problem. Okay? So we got to get this straight. Okay? I'm telling my black brothers and sisters, you know, just take care of your hair. Make sure it's nice and neat. Wear your natural look. I'm down with you. If I'm the only black pre that's going to be up with you, to stand up, to stand up with you on this, I'm with you on this. I'm down with you. Okay, so today we're going to start off, we're going to go a little bit of history. Let's talk about Enoch. Enoch is the son of Cain, if you read Genesis uh, 4.17. Enoch's son, Lamech. Uh, Enoch's son was Lamech uh, in Genesis 4.18. Lamech is Enoch's son, and Lamech is also the father of Noah, so that makes Enoch, Noah's grandfather. Now you go back in biblical history, only in the Hebrew Bible, not in the Jewish Bible or the Christian Bible, there is a book called the Book of Enoch. And I believe there is a book one and a book two. So the Book of Enoch is, is, a, is one of the oldest testaments in the Bible and uh, in the Hebrew Bible. And it also is very important because it talks about their heritage and their history. Now, I don't know why when I hear preachers preach, they act like that the Hebrew Israelites or the Israelites is uh, people from another planet. No, those are from another planet. Those are our ancestors. Those are our ancestors. I'm sorry to tell you. They're not separated from this world. They're still here on this earth and they're in our DNA as black people. Whether you're from Africa or you or you're in America, because we're the only culture that's been scattered all over the world and was scattered there by ships and sold into slavery by the kings over in Africa, like Ghana and other areas like that. Okay, so study your history very closely. It just didn't start in 1619. It started way back with King Musa, Musa one, and all of them all the way back in those tribes that held our black ancestors as slaves and sold them to the other countries like Spain, Europe, Portuguese, into slavery for goods, for sugar, for guns, for alcohol, and a lot of other resources that they didn't have in their country, rice, rum. So study history real close. It just didn't start in 1619. So now we're going to talk about this as I gave you that little history there. And I gave you history about Enoch all the way up to Noah. In the book of Enoch, it talks about this. Book of Enoch 106 verses 1 through 5 says out of the Hebrew Bible. And after some days, my son Methuselah, oldest Methuselah, y'all remember that. That's where they come from. Took a wife for his son. And she became pregnant by him and bore a son called Noah. Guess what? They say uh, Noah's body was white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose. So Noah was kind of like albino. He wasn't a European Caucasian white. He was albino according to the biological studies. Okay. Which I studied real closely. And there, and his hair on his head and his locks, long locks, were white as snow. So here's a kid that was born albino with white hair like wool and it was locks. And they say his eyes were beautiful. And when he opened his eyes, he lighted up the whole house like the sun. And the whole house was very bright. And thereupon he arose his hands of the midwife, opened his mouth, and conversed with the Lord of righteousness. And his father, Lamech, was afraid of him and fled. His own father was afraid. And came to his father, Methuselah, and said unto him, I begot a strange son. Don't they say that we look strange? Whether we black or look like an albino, we're strange. We're some strange looking people. Okay. Diverse from unlike man and resembling the sons of the God of heaven. 
Ooh. Wait a minute. Whoa. Didn't Jesus have hair like wool, skin, bronze? Didn't. Okay. Let's, let's, let's get real here. Now, we got to think about something here. Egyptians are people of color. They're dark skinned. These Egyptians, they shown y'all today and all these Arabs and stuff with all these light skin and black hair and blue eyes and all that. Those are people that converted to, to a lot of those people converted to Judaism. A lot of them practice Islam. Okay, and then you got the Greeks and the Romans who converted to Judaism. And all these other European, French and all these people and Russians and Germans, they converted to Judaism. Those are not the real Jews. God chose Hebrew Israelites. You didn't start hearing about the word Jew until you got to the book of uh, Esther. Reach your Bible close. Wake up. Okay? Now we're going to talk about the Cushite. Uh-oh, the Cushite kingdom of Sheba in Yemen. Around 500 B.C., Joktan, son of Eber, uh-oh, the father of the Hebrews, the father of Hebrews, God did promise Abraham that he would have his own nation, he'd be the father of his nations. But we're talking about the father of Hebrew, the Hebrews. If you go back in your Bible and look, Abraham. I believe that's that's in the same bloodline of Abraham, if not one of his great great grandfathers, if I'm correct. He also had a son named Seba, a Saba. His his Hebrew Semitic children lived in South Arabia, with the Cushite kingdom of Sheba, Saba, Ethiopia, and their hairstyles of the African American and black people are just like ours today, according to the art 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 and the 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 uh, structures of what they created of the people how they looked like back then they had dreads they had locks okay the original arab ishmaelites the ishmaels the ishmaelites the ishmael kushites and the hebrews the son of jacob in south arabia were brown-skinned people with kinky negro hair so something going on wrong here because in, in, in a lot of these times, the Ishmaelites, the Cushites, and the Hebrews, and the Canaanites, and the Idiomites, and all these people intermarried. So you're going to have children coming out dark skin, light skin, straight hair, kinky hair, crazy color looking eyes. Some of them had hair that was in locks and dreads and this hair as they got older. So what is it going on today about this discrimination with hair? Alicia Keys, thank you, and other people that reached out to these students that was being discriminated and kicked out of school and couldn't graduate because of their hair? How come no other cultures have been kicked out of school because of their hair? How come nobody else have been fired off a job because of their hair? How come we have to be the target because of our hair? I know y'all looking at me, but you don't have no hair. Once upon a time, I did have long hair. And I, and I had all kind of jerry curls and, and straightening and stuff on my hair. I mean, my hair is already kind of semi-naturally straight. But I wanted to straighten curly. I wanted it, whoa, back in the day. Now I'm kind of bald and can't get it to grow like I used to. As you think about it, you know, as I said, a lot of these products that came from China and Korea affected the black people's hair. End up losing your hair. So if you go back in history, it's there that this natural look is okay. But it's somebody that's jealous because they don't have your hair. And they want your hair. So they'll do things to go against you about your hair. Okay, let's talk about something else here. We go back to the history of 701 BC. The real Ishmaelites from the tribe of Judah, their hair was like locks. There is a British Museum in London that carried the art and, and the sculptures and the engraving and the drawings and, and how the people of Judah looked, of the people of Israel looked, the Egyptians and the Babylonians and the uh, Africans all across the world. If you read in the book of uh, Second Chronicles 
32, 9, and Isaiah 36, 1 and 2, 2 Kings 18, and Micah 1, 13, there is a artifact or this article of archaeology of art that was drawn to show you how these people looked back in the day. It was called the Lachish Relief, if I'm correct. The Lachish, Kare the, the Lachish Relief, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And, and it shows you, as you can see, the hair and the beard texture of the original Israelites. They were, it was kinky. It was like locks. So what's the problem today? The same people that you're talking about that that God chose, the Hebrew Israelites, because like I say, you didn't start hearing about Jews so you got to the book of Esther. So, I, you know, that means that you, you're going against God's people anyway. If the, he chose the Hebrew Israelites, so who, who are you really going against? You, some of y'all don't even really know. Some of y'all don't even know who God's real chosen people were. He created everyone. But God had to choose a certain group of people to be the light of the world, to be an example of the world. Y'all need to read in Deuteronomy. I think around seven. Real closely. Okay? So it talks about, you know, significant by small knots of hair. Well, I don't see no, these people that they call in Jews today, they don't have no kinky hair. They have straight hair. They didn't have to wear no, uh, 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 what they call a, a, a keeper on the, a, a, a kiper or whatever, how you pronounce that Jewish thing that they wear on top of their head. Their head. That, that wouldn't require no wear in the Bible. It says originally Israelites did not wear, nor it required, it was required by God in the Torah for the children of Judah to wear the, this kippah on their hair. On their head, I mean. That wasn't a requirement. That was a part of God's cost, uh, uniform. So I'm just being real. And I'm not being discriminative to either. But I'm just trying to give you some insight on why are people discriminating against the black culture here. As I say, black preachers, anything that affect our young people and men out there in the work field trying to get education, it should affect you. And your church, and you need to speak up on it. You need to be speaking up on abortion. You need to be talking against that. A lot of y'all for it. I can imagine some of the money that was thrown in your, hand, in your hands and under the table by these politicians as they came and spoke in your church. For you not to speak on certain things. But that's okay. God see everything. But this hair thing, it's nonsense. And as long as you keep your hair neat, trimmed, and clean and maintained, it's okay. Just follow the job rules to the best of the ability or wherever you're going, but don't let nobody tell you that you can't wear your natural look because this is what God gave you. That's your gift. Well, I hope you all have a nice day and share this video with someone and may God bless you.